you do a Marshall mix design, you pick the optimum asphalt content, uh, is it going to work? Okay. Uh, well, uh, we have the volumetric properties, and we also have the stability and the flow. What does it mean? Uh, how is this related to performance? Well, what is Marshall stability? Okay. Uh, Marshall stability is sort of related to the tensile strength of the asphalt mixture. Okay. If you have a uh, higher Marshall stability, means the tensile strength is higher. So if the tensile strength is higher, uh, the mixture is more resistant to uh, bottom-up cracking right? and nothing else. Okay. Because everything else is not related to uh, Marshall stability. And it's not related to shear strength, so it's not related to rutting resistance. So if you try to increase the strutting, rutting resistance, uh, if we try to increase the Marshall stability, it doesn't help because it's not related to shear strength, which is related to rutting resistance. Okay. Well, what might be related to rutting resistance is the Marshall flow. Okay. Marshall flow is uh, related to, uh, you know, if, if we have a, we try to keep the Marshall flow not too high, okay. A high Marshall flow is related to tender mix with low resistance to rotting. So there's some merits uh, in the Marshall mix design method, but there are some possible problems as I have just pointed out earlier. Okay, uh, we want to move on to the next one. This is a beam mixed design method, which uh, a lot of you may not be familiar with. It was uh, developed by uh, Mr. Veeam. That's why it's called the Veeam method. He used to work for the uh, California Division of Highways. Uh, okay. And it's been, uh, had been used by several Western states in the U.S. before they adopted the, the super pave. Okay. And now the, there's only one state that is using it, the uh, California Department of Transportation is still using it. In this method, the asphalt mixture was compacted using uh, a kneading compactor, okay, which were able to compact the mixture uh, better as a more effective way of compacting the mixture. A good compactive effort could be achieved uh, compared to uh, Marshall method, this gives a better compactive effort. And uh, it, in this method, you, we measure the Veeam uh, stabilometer value using this Veeam stabilometer. And also it measures the air void of the compacted mixture. And then another test is the swell test, which uh, is shown here. Okay, uh, basically the Specimen is soaked in water for 24 hours and it measures the swelling of the specimen after 24 hours of soaking. Okay. And here are the criteria is used. Okay. In this method, we uh, need to have high enough uh, stabilometer value. Okay. The air void needs to be at least 4% in this method and it needs to meet the swell test that, uh, that it should not swell too much. If a specimen, if after it's soaked in water, if it swells too much, it, it, it means that the water is uh, not resistant to, to water. Okay, well, uh, is it any good? Uh, uh, the properties that measure in this property, uh, in this uh, mixed design method, uh, how are they related to performance? Well, it's found that the, the Veeam S value is related to shear strength and rutting resistance. Okay, so one of the criteria is the, the Veeam S value, and if the Veeam S value is high enough, the mixture would be resistant to rutting. So it's really good. Uh, it, you know, it, this method would make sure that it, the mixture would not rut. And also, the, uh, it also will make sure that it would be resistance to water effect. Okay. But the limitation of the Veeam method is that it's an empirical test, and it's 
uh, also is not widely known and, and used. Okay. Most of you probably have not uh, used the, the Vim method. Or you, you may have learned it in school, but you know, then if you don't use it, then you forget about it. Uh, and also, it does not, uh, cracking resistance is not evaluated. Basically, you evaluate only the rotting resistance. Okay, now we move on to this famous uh, one, the Superfay volumetric mix design method. Okay, this was uh, developed as a result of this uh, uh, big research effort that was uh, uh, done in uh, 1993. And uh, one of the uh, product of this uh, with the strategic highway research program is the superpay uh, mixed design method. Okay. Originally, there were uh, to be two, three levels of design, level one, two, and three, where level one is supposed to be only uh, supposed to be for low volume roads, but uh, now only the level one mixed design method has been implemented and it's known as the superpay volumetric uh, mixed design method. And this is a method that is being used by most of the state highway uh, departments in, in the United States. Okay, um, in this mixed design method, the first thing is to select the, the asphalt Okay, so the asphalt needs to be of the right uh, grade. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm not going over the, uh, the selection of the asphalt. The asphalt has to be of the right PG grade for, for the, the, uh, the, the temperature condition of the, the area. And then the second one is that uh, the aggregate needs to meet uh, the requirements Okay, there are four uh, properties called the consensus properties that it needs to meet. Okay, this includes coarse aggregate angularity, fine aggregate angularity. Okay, this is to make sure that the aggregates uh, have, uh, have angular shape. Uh, we, uh, round aggregates are considered not as good. Uh, it needs to, uh, not to be flat and elongated. And also, it needs not to have too much clay content. So there are four uh, consensus properties and the requirements that the aggregates uh, need to meet. And then uh, it also uh, need to meet other source properties, which are specified by the local uh, highway agencies. Okay. So there are very strict requirements on the asphalt and very strict requirements on the properties of the aggregate. Okay, and not only just the physical properties, but also the gradation. Okay, uh, the, the gradation uh, must meet uh, certain requirements. Okay, and how does, uh, what are the requirements? This is the requirements there. Uh, there are control points. Uh, this is a gradation plot, percent passing versus uh, the sift size. Uh, in, in this method, there are control points, and when you plot the gradation, the gradation needs to pass uh, between the control points. Okay. And uh, this is an example of a, uh, of a gradation uh, which meets the requirements. So as you can see, this, when it's plotted, it goes between these control points uh, between these control points uh, and then between these two control points. And there's also a point at the center here called the PCS control point. If the gradation goes below this uh, PCS control point, it's, uh, this is known as a coarse graded mixture uh, gradation. Okay. If it's above that point, it's uh, called fine graded. Okay, if it's below, it means it has more of the coarser particles. Okay. So uh, it needs to meet the gradation requirement. So after that, so we have a mixture uh, has the right asphalt and the right 
aggregate with the right gradation, now we can make mixtures and the, the next task is to determine the optimum asphalt content in this method. So make the mixtures at different asphalt content uh, and it's, uh, after it's mixed, it's put in a forced draft oven for at 135 degrees C for four hours. This simulates the, the fuel condition. In production of asphalt mixture, uh, you mix it in the plant and it's in the truck and so it, it stays hot for, for quite some time and in the process of doing that, the asphalt age hardens. So this method simulates that possible age hardening process. Okay. So after this uh, uh, age hardening process, the mixture would then be compacted. It's compacted in uh, a gyratory compactor. Okay. Basically, the mixture is, is placed into uh, this cylindrical mold. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, it just, this compactor is set at an an angle of 1.25 degree. Uh, there's a ram pressure of 600 kilopascal, and this is a specimen height. So you put it in this compactor, and uh, the and then this uh, this compactor would rotate. The higher the number of rotation, the greater the amount of compactive effort. Well, how much is it going to be compacted? Well, the the uh, the basic uh, the main purpose of compaction is to, sim you, is to compact the specimen so that it simulates the actual condition, right? And, uh, well, what are the actual condition? Uh, well, here's uh, pictures of the gyratory compactor. Well, how much should it be compacted? Well, it depends on the expected traffic. If it's designed for high traffic, then you would compact it more because the purpose is to compact it so that the mixture simulate the actual condition. Well, what are the actual conditions? There's two conditions. One is a design condition. The other one is the ultimate, okay, the maximum. Okay. You want to compact it so that you have the specimen would be in a condition that uh, would be similar to a condition about three to five years later. Okay. You know, if you put it down, Three to five years later, how how much how how dense is that mixture going to be? So if you compact to this number of uh, cycles, uh, you know for for the different traffic, then you end up with a mixture that is representative of the condition three to five years uh, after uh, after it's open to traffic. Uh, and the end max is the ultimate condition at the end of the design life. How is it going to be? Okay. And also there is an N initial. This, uh, this one is a condition that is used to evaluate the compatibility of the mixture. It's not uh, actually not related to uh, any specific uh, condition in the row, but it's used to evaluate how easily the mixture can be compacted. Okay, so um, for example, if we design uh, for a traffic level of let's say three to 30 million ESOs, okay, according to this method, we would compact it all the way to 160 uh, revolution with this gyratory compactor. And at 100 revolution, we have a condition that, is, that would uh, be similar to a condition three to five years uh, you know, from the beginning, and then at, when it's compacted to 160 cycles, it would represent the ultimate condition. Okay, and so it's, uh, in this method, you basically put the mixture in, you compact it all the way to uh, what this table tells you, and what is the optimum asphalt content then? Well, the optimum asphalt content occurs according to this method, you want to put in the right amount of asphalt so that when you compact it to end design, you end up with 4% air void. Okay, that's, that's the main thing. 
Okay, and and uh, and it depends on how many times you have to compact. So like, if I go back, if if we design for this traffic, then when it's compacted for 100 revolution, the air void has to be 4%. Okay, and so, so that's the essence of the super pay uh, mixed design method. So if it's designed for a higher traffic, then you have to compact it to you know, a total of uh, 205, and at 125, you have to make sure that you have 4% air void. Okay. So it depends on the traffic and the compacted effort that's associated with for the traffic that you design for. Okay, so uh, in this method, you, uh, you want an air void of 4%. And at that condition, we also want to make sure, that in this method, we have to make sure that all the other criteria are met, which includes uh, VMA. VMA needs to be uh, a minimum amount. We need to, the percent voice filled with aggregate needs to be in proper range. Uh, the dust uh, ratio, the dust proportion, which is uh, percent passing uh, the seven, uh, 75 micrometer sieve uh, divided by the effective asphalt content needs to be in this range. Uh, and also, uh, there's two other things. Okay, so uh, there's requirement that uh, N initial uh, cannot be too high. Okay, this is something that I mentioned at the beginning that. Uh, it, N initial is a small amount of compactive effort, and in this method, it want to make sure that a mixture does not compact too easily. If a mixture compacts too easily at the beginning, it means that it may have problem with rotting. Okay, and this is just a, uh, an assumption. Okay, uh, whether or not it, it works, I'm not sure, but that's the assumption that uh, if it compacts too easily, we may have a problem, and that's wh why it's put in there. So when at N initial, when you compact only a few times, uh, you don't want it to compact too fast. Okay? So there's a limit on how much uh, it's, it's considered okay. And also, N max, at the end of its design life, you want to make sure that there's still a little bit of air left. Okay? That little bit of air is 2%. Okay, the G MM uh, is the percent of maximum density. If we, uh, the maximum, if we have 98% of the maximum density, it means that the air void is 2%. Okay, so, so uh, that's the uh, essence of the super pay method. Uh, but also, there's also a requirement that it's uh, not going to have a problem with, uh, with uh, you know, exposure to water. There's a water sensitivity test. Okay, so now we come up with a mixed design. Is that mixture going to be resistant to water? Okay, and so uh, to make sure that it's resistant to water, the following test is run. Okay, the mixture is uh, with that composition is compacted to 7% air void. Okay, remember it's not compacted to 4%. Why is it compact to 7%? Well, when you design a mixture at 4% air void, when you construct it, it usually constructed at, uh, it's usually compacted to 7%, not to 4%. 4% is its condition three to five years later. Okay, but when it's initially com uh, constructed, it's 7%. So it's compacted at 7% to 7% air void. As you can see, the, it has a lot of requirements. Okay, so uh, it's good because it uh, requires the the asphalt to be of the right grade for the weather condition. There's also a lot of uh, requirement on aggregate. It requires uh, use of high quality aggregate. Okay, and when in the mixed design method, the mixture is subjected to fairly high compactive effort. And if the mixture could take such a high compactive effort, usually it should, uh, be, it, it should be fairly strong. If, if it cannot take such a high compactive effort, it, it may have problems. So I put it down here that the super paved gyratory compactor applies a fairly high compactive effort, 
mixtures that can withstand such a high